everyone, in this video I'm going to go through a practice problem which looks at evaluating the welfare effects of a price floor. So here's our question, we have market demand is given by the equation QD is equal to 1220 minus 4P and market supply is given by the equation QS is equal to P. What are the welfare implications if a price floor equal to well, 255 is placed on the market? Right, so the plan is pretty straightforward. We're going to evaluate the welfare prior to the price floor being implemented. So that's consumer surplus, producer surplus, total surplus, and any dead weight loss. We're then going to evaluate welfare after the price floor has been implemented. And we're just going to check the difference between the two. So let's start by finding the pre-price floor equilibrium and we do that by setting quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied because they're equal in equilibrium. Substituting our equations in we get well 1220 minus 4p that's demand is equal to p that's our supply. Adding 4p to both sides we get 1220 is equal to 5p. And dividing both sides by 5, we get the price is equal to, well, 244. That's 1,220 divided by 5. Now, this is the equilibrium price, and we can substitute it either into demand or supply in order to find our equilibrium quantity. I'm going to put it into our supply curve because that's just an easier function to deal with. And I get, well, QS is equal to 244 because that's the price. Now, because we're in equilibrium, our quantity supplied is equal to our quantity demanded, which is equal to Q star, so that's our equilibrium quantity. So Q star is equal to 244. So let's draw this out now. I have two axes. On the horizontal axis, we have quantity, and on the vertical, we have price. In order to draw our demand curve, I'm just going to find the two axis intercepts and then join them together. So to find our price axis intercept, I'm going to set Q subscript D equal to zero. So I get zero is equal to 1,220 minus four times P. If we add four P to both sides, I get four P is equal to 1,220. Dividing both sides by four, I get the price is equal to 305. So that's the price axis intercept for our demand curve. Now when price is equal to zero, that's our quantity axis intercept for our demand curve. So if we substitute that in, we get QD is equal to 1,220 minus four times zero. So that's just 1,220. And we can join together those points and we get our demand curve. Our supply curve is actually really easy. There is no constant in our equation. So I can tell that the function just comes out from the origin. And I can actually anchor my supply curve to the equilibrium point that I found earlier because I know that the supply curve goes through that point. So there it is, and that will be our supply curve. So that's the diagram and our price and quantity that is traded before the price floor is placed on the market. As for our welfare, our consumer surplus, which is CS, well, that's just the area below demand above the price line. Now this area is a triangle, so we can use the formula half times base times height. Our base will be just 244, and our height is, well, this height, so 305 minus 244, so equal to 61. So we get half times 244 times 61, and I get 7,442. Our producer surplus, which is PS, is also a triangle. And so it's the area above our supply curve below our price line. The area is half times base times height. In this case, the height and the base are both 244. So half times 244 times 244, well, I get 29,768. Our total surplus will just be the sum of our consumer surplus plus our producer surplus. And if I add those up, I get 37,210. And this is actually the maximum possible surplus that we can get from this market. We've exhausted all of our gains from trade and we've produced right up to the efficient amount Q star. So there will be no dead weight loss in this scenario. So I can put all of that in our table. 
The next thing we can do is impose our price floor. If we do that, you can see that the price of 255 is above our equilibrium price. The price floor means that we cannot go below that price of 255. Now, since the equilibrium price is 244, so lower than 255, this is what we call a binding price floor. It makes a difference to what happens in our market. So our market will not be allowed to clear in this case. Using our demand curve, we can see that at the price of 255, quantity demanded is, well, 1,220 minus 4 times 255. Now, 4 times 255 is 1,020. So the difference here is 200. So that's how much will be demanded at this higher price of 255. Now, just remove the old equilibrium price and quantity to make some room. And now with this information, we can find our consumer surplus and our producer surplus. Our consumer surplus will just be this triangle here. Again, the area above price, below demand. We use our area of our triangle again. Our base is 200. Our height is 305 minus 255, so equal to 50. So we get half times 200 times 50, 5,000. Now our producer surplus is actually this area here, which is a trapezium. We're going to assume that the lowest cost producers are the ones who supply the 200 units. So that's why I'm at this part of the supply curve. It's just a standard way of treating this sort of analysis. Now there is a formula for the area of a trapezium, but I can't remember it. So I, I always just take the area as well, rectangle plus triangle, right? Now the area of a rectangle is base times height and the area of a triangle is just half times base times height. The level here is 200, and we can easily see this because our quantity is 200 at that point, and our supply curve just tells us that price is equal to quantity supplied. So that level is 200. So the height of our rectangle will be 255 minus 200, so 55, and the base is just 200. So for our rectangle area, we'll get 200 times 55, the triangle is half times base times height. The base is also 200 and so is the height. So this comes out all to 11,000 and 20,000, so 31,000 all up. Our total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So 5,000 plus 31,000, so 36,000 in total. So let's put all that in our table. Our total surplus is lower. So we see a general reduction in welfare as a result of the price floor. You can see here that our producers, however, has actually gained from this price floor. Their original surplus was 29,768, and now they get 31,000. And that's pretty intuitive. The producers get a higher price than in equilibrium, and that's been good for them overall. Now our consumers have lost out here. Instead of 7,442, they only get 5,000. The consumers don't like those higher prices, right? The reduction in total welfare is captured by what we call deadweight loss. Now we can see the deadweight loss as the difference in the total surplus in each state, basically the surplus lost as a result of the price floor. So we take the difference between total surplus, so 37,210 minus 36,000, which is equal to 1,210. Now this amount should be the same as this area here, this triangle. So our triangle is half times base times height. Now our base is actually 44. So I can put the original efficient quantity Q star of 244 here. So that base is 244 minus 200. And the height is just 255 minus 200, just taking the difference between those two points there. And so this all equals 1,210. So this all makes sense. Um, that's our welfare analysis of the binding price floor. And this diagrammatic representation of our deadweight loss actually lends itself to an alternative interpretation of deadweight loss or another way of seeing it. So if we think with the price floor, we've traded 200 units, but all of the units right up to 244, well, the marginal benefit 
of consumption, which is captured by our demand curve, is higher than the marginal cost of production, which is captured by our supply curve. So trade would have been possible for those additional 44 units um, at some price. And for whatever price that you know was decided on for those units, someone would have gotten some surplus. But because we haven't produced these units, that potential for uh, surplus has been lost. And that's really um, one way to see that deadweight loss. All right, that's it. That's the video. I hope that you guys are doing well and I hope that this helped uh, keep happy and safe everyone.